All right, so this video is to show you how to start an IV. Right, so first things first, right, we need to think about, you know, why are we starting this IV? Are we starting it because we have to give medications? Are we starting it because our patient needs fluids? Right, we have to determine why am I giving this, right? Because that's going to help us figure out, do I need a large catheter? Do I need a small catheter? Do I need a 15 drop set or a 60 drop set? So in this particular scenario, we're going to look at a patient who needs some fluids. So we're going to do what we call a fluid bolus. Um, so the skills, uh, the skills that we're going to perform, you, you'll be able to kind of follow along as you use your uh, National Registry Advanced Psychomotor uh, IV Therapy sheets. Um, as you look at the sheet, there's going to be a few things that we're going to do a little different. Um, when we're starting our IVs here, you're going to see me starting a, what we call a saline lock. Right? Once we have a saline lock in place, it's easy to attach or to remove fluids for our patients. We're, starting to, uh, we're beginning to start saline locks uh, basically on all patients you know, when we look at the ambulance or in the ER. Uh, that way, like I said, we can easily connect or disconnect fluids. All right, so as we get started, we need to look at well, what do we need for equipment. Right? We're going to be working with blood, so make sure that we have our BSI. So we have our gloves. Right? We're going to need to get these veins to engorge, so we have some uh, constricting band or a tourniquet. We have some alcohol prep pads to make sure our site is clean and sterile. We have some catheters. Like I said, the size of your catheter is going to be determined by your patient. Uh, today I'm going to be using an 18 gauge catheter. We have our tape to secure uh, our, our catheter and our IV line, a 2x2 two two, uh, in case we need to wipe up some blood, and then our fluids. So like I said, today we're going to be starting a saline lock. So I have my saline flush syringe and I have the actual lock. And then if we need to run fluid, I have my uh, saline uh, 500 milliliter bag as well as my drip set. So I have a normal saline, it might be lactated ringers, might be D5W depending on your patient. And then same thing with the drip set. So I'm using a 10 drop set today, uh, which means it's 10 drips or 10 drops equal uh, one milliliter of fluid. All right, so let's get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to put my BSI on uh, right away here at the beginning. All right, once our BSI is on, um, we're gonna go ahead and let's set up our fluid, make sure our fluid is ready to go. So I'm gonna grab my normal saline, I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to make sure that I have the right fluid, I'm going to make sure that it's, not, it's clear, uh, doesn't have anything floating in it, and last but not least, that it's not expired. I'm going to do the same thing for my drip set, we're going to open it up, and I'm going to look at it, make sure that my drip set's not discolored, it's not yellow, uh, it's, right, everything looks good, and then I'm going to take my, my roller clamp, and I'm going to pull it all the way up, towards the top so that it's a couple inches below that drip chamber and then we can close off that roller clamp. When spiking a bag we want to make sure that we're using a sterile technique so when I pull the caps off I don't want to be touching uh, the spike or the end of the bag. And we're going to take our spike, we're going to insert it with a twisting motion into the bag and then we can turn it upright, squeeze the drip chamber a couple of times so that we have our drip chamber about half full of fluid and then we'll go ahead and we'll set it on our IV pole. Okay, once I'm up here, release the roller clamp, we'll see the fluid start to flow down right, so that I can flush out the line, make sure that we have no air. Okay, And then we go ahead and uh, close that roller clamp once again and just verify that we don't have any air uh, trapped in our line. And then we can go ahead and hang that so that it's ready to go. Okay, I'm also going to prepare my saline flush, or sorry, my saline lock. So I'm going to open up my lock, open up the saline, make sure once again the saline isn't expired, it's clear, right, and that it is, this is in fact 0.9% uh, sodium chloride. Okay, we can attach that to our lock and then go ahead and purge it, uh, purge the air out of the line and leave this then in the plastic so that it stays sterile. Alright, so now to actually perform the venipuncture. We're going to go ahead and grab our constricting band. We're going to place it up above the elbow. We're going to make sure that it's nice and snug. 
and we should start to see these veins fill up with blood. We may need to have your patient squeeze their fist a few times uh, to help kind of uh, that blood get down there. Once we do that, we want to all right, kind of palpate and feel for an appropriate vein. So for today's scenario, I'm looking at a, an adult patient who needs a, a bolus of fluid. Uh, so we're going to use our 18 gauge catheter and I'm going to do it uh, in the uh, AC. So I've located my vein, I've palpated it, and now I'm going to clean it with my alcohol prep pad. When cleaning with our alcohol prep pad, we're going to use that aseptic technique where we're making circles, right, going from smaller to larger, uh, working our way out, and then now making sure to not touch the area. We want to give the alcohol just a moment to dry, uh, so that way it's uh, kind of dry and it's not going to cause any discomfort. So while I wait for that to dry, I can go ahead and quickly cut a couple of pieces uh, of tape. Uh, three to four inches is plenty. And now it's dry and ready to go. So I'm going to pull out my catheter. I'm going to look at it make sure that I'm going to go bevel up. I'm going to hold it. I'm going to pull down on the vein and then at a uh, 15 to 30 degree angle we're going to go ahead and insert the catheter looking for flash I now have flash in my chamber so I'm going to drop it down and advance it about an eighth of an inch and then we can go ahead and advance the catheter forward okay at this point undo our tourniquet release some of that pressure I'm going to go ahead and occlude at the proximal end of that catheter and then stabilize the hub pull the needle out Needle goes into an appropriate sharps container. And then we're going to attach our flush or our lock. Pull back. We have a return of blood, so we have a good line. Flush the line with my saline. At this time, I usually tell my patients that they may get, um, they may have an odd or a weird taste in their mouth. A lot of patients will be able to taste that salt. We're going to go ahead and pull off the uh, pull off the flush, leaving the um, lock in place and this is where that 2x2 two two will come in handy we can go ahead and clean up some of this blood so that my tagoderm sticks better the tagoderm will go on in place that way we can see that puncture site right we can monitor it make sure that we didn't have any infiltration as we flushed make sure that it doesn't become red or irritated. All right, now that our saline lock is in place, we're going to go ahead and attach some fluid. So once again, because I was touching the lock, we're going to go ahead and clean the end of the saline lock. I'm going to grab my fluid. I'm going to remove the little end cap, and then this will screw on to our lock. Okay, make sure we maintain that. I'm going to open up my roller clamp. All right, we're going to flush the line, make sure that we have good flow, everything's working properly, and then we're going to adjust this to the appropriate rate. Uh, if my patient needs fluid, typically we're going to leave it wide open. If they don't need uh, fluid anymore, we've administered our fluid, we can turn it down to TKO, which means to keep open. So it's about one drop every three to five seconds, uh, just enough fluid to kind of keep the line um, clear. Okay, we're going to make our loop down here below the injection site, we're going to secure a line in place so that it doesn't get torn out, removed, pulled out, and then I usually put one piece of tape above, once again just to help keep it in place. Okay, we verify that my fluid is still running, All right, make sure we're monitoring that site, make sure there's no um, infiltration, and then uh, we are uh, good to go to continue with our IV therapy. Alright, thank you.